If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with a deck tech for you that was requested by Christopher Long, who's one of our patrons on Patreon. He requested a deck tech off of this handy dandy card, this is Nimble Mongoose. And while I could have just given him a deck tech like Rug Delver or something like that, no, 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 we're doing something different. I, one, it gives me the chance to brew again, two, I don't think he wants me to give another cookie cutter deck tech over something like that, and three, Nimble Mongoose is a sweet card, so let's do it some justice. First, a quick little discussion about the deck. It's called Haship, I think that's how it's pronounced, Haship, whatever, Threshold. Now, why is it called that? Well, so if you have a two-color deck, and say it's uh, blue-white, well that's Azorius. If you have green-white, my favorite guild, it's Selesnia. If you have black-red, it's Rakdos, yada yada. For a two-color deck, we give it a guild name, and thankfully there are ten guilds. If you have a three-color deck, you go with a Shard from Shards of Alara or a Wedge from Cons of Tarkir. If you have a four-color deck, often you'll just call it four-color or maybe you'll see someone use the Nephilim from Ravnica block, but no, usually it's just four color. Or occasionally you'll see Leovold Red or Leovold White or some, some name like that. It's a little harder when you get to four colors, but what if you have a two color deck where one of the colors is colorless? Now, you used to just call that mono whatever the color is, but now we have some cards like Warping Whale, like Spatial Contortion, like the Oath cards basically, like Eldrazi, that actually care for a certain color. So, now what do we do? We have to come up with a name for them, right? Well, I guess we don't have to, but let's shorten the names rather than saying green colorless or green waste or whatnot. Instead, the convention I'm using is we take the uncommon uh, lands that produce one color from Hour of Devastation. They are Haship, Ifnir, Ipnu, Romanop, and Shefet, I believe, are the five. And they all produce, see, you can either make colorless or you can pay one and make, in this case, green. So that's the convention that I'm using. That's why it's called a ship threshold. So with that being said, that out of the way, first card in the deck obviously is Nimble Mongoose. So since it's a Nimble Mongoose deck, and for those that don't know what you do, you have Shroud, you're 1-1, one, but you become a 3-3 three, three once you have threshold which means seven or more cards in your grave. So obviously you're going to need to fuel the grave. In a deck like Rug Delver, the way you do that is you play lots of <laughs> cheap spells. You play fetch lands, you play wasteland, and you get a lot in your graveyard awfully quickly so that this becomes, well, a 3-3 three, three and can actually, you know, beat down. So that's our starting point. That's where, <laughs> that's where we begin from. And with that, it makes sense then that the next card would be Tarmogoyf. Now, Tarmogoyf is not as good in the current meta as a lot of people used to. The, I mean, Fatal Push is real, let's be honest. It, it always died to cards like Swords to Plowshares and Abrupt Decay. Now it also dies to Fatal Push. But you can't argue with a 4-5 or a 5-6 for 2 mana. That gets out of hand awfully quickly and gets bigger than just about everything in the format. Uh, speaks for itself, rather, I think the most efficient green beater, mono green anyway, in the game. And certainly given that its cost includes colorless, so it's splashable, <laughs> including in a mono color deck. Now, a little bit of a nombo with the others, but there's a reason. We have four Deathrite Shamans. Now importantly, Threshold only cares about cards in your graveyard, Tarmogoyf cares about everything, but Tarmogoyf only needs one of a given instance, a given card type in order to make itself bigger. So, Deathrite Shaman, yes, it can hit cards in our opponent's grave, so hit their fetch lands, for instance, or wastelands, uh, for mana. Really, though, we just need it. Every mode on this is great. It's a one-mana planeswalker, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah, it ramps us, it deals with cards in the graveyard, like uh, if you're playing against Reanimator, or if you need to hit something in the Storm Graveyard when they go off with Past in Flames, or just whatever the case may be, Deathrite Shaman is a 1-2, which helps against Infect and a few other, like you don't see goblins too much these days, but if you see a goblin lackey, well this is part of the reason why you don't see a lot of goblin lackey anymore. 
Uh, so it's sort of the necessary evil. We have to play it because the meta calls for it. And all of its modes are good. <laughs> now, for the next creatures, I'm a little less sure. Because we're already playing one threshold card, I was incentivized to play another, and I saw on some really old threshold list that we have a guest. She. <laughs> that we have Werebear show up occasionally. So, this is a 1 1 that's actually a 4 4 once you have threshold, but it doesn't protect itself like Nimble Mongoose, unfortunately. It does a few good things for us. It does get around Chalice. It gets around Bolt once Threshold is on. Um, it gets us a little bit out of Wasteland and Blood Moon, uh, simply because it makes mana, which occasionally matters. But it's certainly the weakest creature that we've mentioned so far. I don't. I think that goes without saying. Also, strictly worse version of the card because one that art two it doesn't have a bear arms joke in the flavor text so but that's all right we're fine with this it's a it's a fun card and uh, once you get there a 4-4 beats leovold for instance is is an instance that's come up for me but it's not uh, it's oh it's it's slow you're paying a little more mana than what you'd like to pay, and especially when you compare it to good old Goyf here. Alright, so that said, what I would, if I were to take out copies of Werebear, add in instead, is uh, this guy. This is Matter Reshaper. This is our first card that cares about actual factual colorless mana, waste mana, non-generic, whatever. Um, this is actually in for... I used to have Land Grant. I Land Grant in this deck. Now, this is not a one land deck or anything like that. I was being cute. I thought this would be a quick way to fill up the graveyard for Threshold. It would get us another land. It would get us... Uh, we have a few options that we can go get with it, but no, it was too cute. So we added in Matter Reshaper. Uh, it's slow. <laughs> At 3 mana, this is a bit slow, unfortunately, but it's value. It's a 3-2, so that means that it'll at least trade with a bunch of stuff. And unless there's a rest in peace out, or they're hitting source to plowshares, or council's judgment, it's value. You will get something on the field if it hits a permanent, otherwise, add it to your hand. Uh, I would add more, the only reason I'm not, the only reason is that it's 3 mana. So it's a bit slow, unfortunately. However, in a deck like this, we have, weird to say for a mono green, mono green deck, but we have control elements. <laughs> but we'll get to those in just a second. In our creatures section, we have Smuggler's Copter. <laughs> Banned and standard for a good reason. Only a one of. It doesn't feel very good when it's redundant, but it can turn any of your creatures into a 3-3 flyer that loots. Uh, crew one. That's it. Crew one. Uh, I, I've actually found this to do a good bit of work. I, it has hurt me when I've misplayed, but other than that, I found this to be fine, but it's very slow. For Legacy, it's very slow. And you're seeing a theme to all of this. Everything I've mentioned so far has essentially the same problem as any green stompy deck, or if you're familiar with lands in Legacy, which is, it looks like this is going to be pretty weak to combo, and that's true, we have a few things we can do, but uh, it's a stretch. Okay. Uh, next we have in our creature section, we have Dryad Arbor. It, it is a creature. <laughs> it's a zero mana creature, yet yeah, you can't even cast it. Uh, this art, because it, people don't get confused when they see this art, it's the From the Vault one that I think it's Matthias Hunt wants banned. He doesn't want Dryad Arbor banned, just that particular art, because it throws people off often enough. Also, while I'm at it, shoutouts to Emma Handy for signing. I'm collecting Infect players, <laughs> so uh, as far as I'm aware, still not playing Infect again just yet, but got the signature. If I had known she was there, I would have gotten a different mat <laughs> to have her sign, so I could get all of them on the Noble Hierarch map. And uh, now for our interaction suite. Okay, so we start off with the most underrated removal card in Legacy, I think. This is Warping Whale, another one that actually cares about colorless. All of the modes are useful, more useful than a lot of people give them credit for, but of course there are times when this is not going to do you anything. So, you can exile a creature with power or toughness, one or less. So it exiles it, 
and Power or Toughness 1 or less hits a lot more than a lot of people think in the format. As an infle Infect player, this hurts. <laughs> this breaks my heart. Then you can counter target sorcery spell like, I don't know, Show and Tell is the one that seems to come up the most for me, but depends on your meta. And then you can even, if you need to in a pinch, turn it into a creature. So effectively it improves the creature count in the deck, making a 1-1 that can sack itself for more mana, which, as I learned, fun fact, you can use that against Dredge to make them sack their bridges from below. <laughs> That was a silly moment. I'm glad it worked, but wow. Uh, next we have, as you can imagine, if there's Warping Well, there's Spatial Contortion. Just a removal spell. It's very rarely a pump spell. Rarely does that come up because you'll notice our creatures don't have Trample, for instance, and it would kill our Smuggler's Copter. So it's a removal spell. But it kills things like Leovold. Better to let them only draw one card off Leovold the whole time. Uh, and enough other cards that I think it's worth it. Plus, we're a deck that needs to have some sort of interaction, and Spatial Contortion helps to flesh that out a little bit. Next, we have Snuff Out, I mean, <laughs> Dismember. <laughs> Snuff Out for non-black decks. So, one mana and four life. We can pay down to zero, thanks to Deathrite Shaman and one land in here, but usually four life just as an extra removal spell. Just one mana, we can deal with pretty much anything in the format. Pretty much anything, unless it's being reanimated, coming down off of show and tell or sneak attack, or being cast off of 15 mana with cloud post. We can deal with it. Okay. Uh, next we have four life from the loam, and while the power of this card shouldn't be evident yet, after all we haven't gotten to the lands, you can imagine where I'm going with this. A lot of the inspiration for this deck does come from a legacy lands list. Despite what you see up here, you'll see the inspiration come soon enough. Very soon. Uh, but yes, Life in the Loam gives you a lot of inevitability. Crop Rotation, easy way to fill up the graveyard, and it goes and gets us, again, the cards I'm about to show you down here. It also goes and gets a creature in Dried Arbor, albeit one that doesn't have haste. It does have summoning sickness, but surprise blocker in yet another way. And it matters for utility cards out of the sideboard as well, which you'll see in just a bit. Speaking of utility, we have Traverse the Ulven just a one-up. This is an experimental card that, unlike Land Grant, actually survived testing, I, I found. Barely, and maybe I should turn this into another matter reshaper or some other interaction piece, but Traverse the Ulvenwald, I have found in my experience, take that for what it's worth, does make the cut even if not by much. So you search for a basic, it replaces itself with a basic, and we have enough in this deck that that's fine, but with Delirium, you can get a creature or a land, and it doesn't have to be a basic land. We've, we've seen this in Standard, we know what this thing does. We've seen Delirium decks abuse it to high heck. So, again, we can get not just utility lands, but we can go and get any of our creatures, except Smuggler's Copter, if we need to, in a pinch. And while no creature is explosive, getting a Deathrite Shaman when you need to deal with a graveyard, or getting a Goyf when you just want to go huge, can actually matter. Or if you need a creature they won't be interacted with, get Nimble Mongoose, etc. And the lands will, will, will show. Now, just as one of, we have a Sylvan Library in the main board. For the decks where life total does not matter, even when life total does matter, it's still card selection. You get to look at the top three cards and put them back in whatever order you'd like, and then you may draw. Alright, so that card doesn't always see itself in... I mean, I've experimented with Sylvan Library in the main board of Infect, and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's slow, but against those grindy matches, and especially where your life total actually does not matter, it's fine. And then... A one of Umizawa's Jite. Doesn't go on the Mongoose, goes on everything else. There are decks like Merfolk and some Leovold decks, or Checkpile, what a, what not, that'll put this as just as a one of in the deck. It's legendary, so be careful about redundant copies. And you also don't have a Stoneforge to go tutor it up, but just as one to help get your creatures through combat, or be another interaction piece, or gain you some life in a pinch against, say, the burn decks. That's something that you can have. Now, on to our lands. On to our lands. We already mentioned Haship Oasis, and it's able to give us both of our colors. 
I, I think we get the point behind this. Can I stop doing that now? Okay, we're good. Uh, it also can turn into a pump spell in a pinch lay, way later in the game if you need it to be. Just plus three, plus three, only at sorcery speed, won't work on Nimble Mongoose, but it's a little more utility. All right, it's the reason why we don't play, say, um, well, what's the uh, pain land that produces Golgari colors or colorless? There's a reason we don't play that instead. Uh, this actually has some utility outside of it. And of course, with Life from the Loam, if we absolutely need to and have buttloads of mana, then we can use it as a repeatable pump spell. I've never been in that situation. It's an option, though. Uh, four basic lands gives us plenty to play around Wasteland with, and lo and behold, four is a fine number, and Blood Moon, etc. You get the idea. Alright. Now... That said, we do still have something that cares about black mana in the deck. We have Deathrite Shaman's ability, and we have Dismember, so we do run a one of Bayou, which occasionally matters, certainly more for Deathrite than Dismember, but it's useful to have. And since we have these, we're running fetch lands. We're not just doing it off of, say, <laughs> crop rotation. We do have four Verdant Catacombs. You can mix it up. They can be any green fetches. I'm running these. It's a good question as to why, so you can potentially bluff that you have basic swamps in the deck, but no, no, these really, really ought to be one of each green, just so that I can play around Pithy Need a little more readily. Okay, so that's my bad, but I'm aware of it, uh, so I'm letting you know. Next, we have four wastelands, fill up the yard, mess with our opponent, we all know what this thing does, and it makes colorless mana. So, Warping Whale is proud. Matter Reshaper is proud. Next, Strip Mine. <laughs> okay, okay, it's Ghost Quarter. Sometimes it's the fifth Wasteland against some of the Delver decks, some of the Leovold decks. Uh, that said, sometimes this actually is Strip Mine. It deals with basic lands, and if they happen to have just one basic, they're done. If they have more than one basic, they usually don't have too many more, unless they have a lot more. So for example, a storm deck, say, Ad Nauseam Tendrils, might have an island and a swamp, and that's it. They don't have much more than that. Or, uh, on the other hand, Merfolk will have a bunch of islands, in which case neither Wasteland no nor Ghost Quarter will get you there, unfortunately. Um, that said, there are enough decks that run one or two, say like, um, well, Esper Stoneblade or Deathblade, uh, that Ghost Quarter is fine it, for dealing with that last, you know, they'll fetch up the safety basic so they can play around Wasteland, and then you'll Ghost Quarter them. <laughs> and then lastly, and of course these are going to play well with Life from the Loam, as will Horizon Canopy. Uh, it does not make colorless and makes us pay one to make green. However, you can use it as card draw, and with Life from the Loam, that gives you an extra card draw all the time. So... That's all well and good. If you don't need an extra land, Horizon Canopy can just filter into another card for you. Alright, so that's your main board, 60 cards. For our sideboard, we're just going to show off the utility, <laughs> the first utility land, it's Pachukabong. This gives us something that with crop rotation, we can just go right ahead and get. Easy enough, deal with their graveyard, keeping ours intact. I, I dig it, I dig it. Next we have Three Dissenters Deliverance. Now, occasionally you'll see this sometimes out of decks that want to deal with artifacts, especially Chalice, because you notice it's not a one-drop, while being able to do something with it if it happens to just be stuck in their hand. However, it does not deal with enchantments. It does say destroy target artifact in cycling, but it does not deal with enchantments. For that, we would want something like Nature's Claim, but again, Chalice of the Void, or Cross and Grip, Right now, at least in my meta, I don't respect enchantments enough uh, to think that that merits a slot. Maybe one, maybe. However, you'll notice that the deck as it's constructed does lose pretty hard to rest in peace if the opponent sees that line. Uh, Nimble Mongoose is a 1-1, Werebear is a 1-1 that makes mana, Goyf is a 0-1, Deathrite Shaman is just a 1-2, Mattery Shaper doesn't get you value. Uh, so we, we actually probably should do something about Rest in Peace, but I have not gotten into that position right now. And even if Rest in Peace comes down, the deck doesn't automatically lose to it. You can think of it in a similar way to, um, to Lands in Legacy, or to Jund in Modern. Yeah, hitting the graveyard hurts, but it's not the end of the world for them. They have another line of play that they can use. 
uh, next to fight the counterspell decks, just as a one of something I was experimenting with, insist. The next creature you sp spell you cast cannot be countered by spells or abilities, and you draw a card. So if you want to force through a creature against a counterspell deck like Show and Tell, ta-da, that's one way to do it. Uh, next, we have Caracas. <laughs> Another utility land. Deals with legendary creatures, deals with reanimator, gives us something against show and tell. You get the idea. Easy enough. Uh, surgical extraction as a two of to fight graveyard decks. So obviously reanimator fights storm, fights a few other things. If you're really greedy, you can try to pull a me and try to <laughs> hit their fetch land or hit whatever. You know, very careful about that. I have gone or like. What was that? Uh, wasteland, and then surgical extract whatever land I hit, and just hope that I got them off lands. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, no. <laughs> no, in general, no. Now, we need something to do against combo decks, in addition to graveyard hate. That's where Thorn of Amethyst comes in, and while this does hurt us, in a similar way to Death and Taxes, we can play through it. Death and Taxes, of course, will have cards like Aether Vial, like Source to Plowshares, sometimes Council's Judgment or something like that. Thorn of Amethyst barely hurts. Uh, that's a, maybe a bad example for Death and Taxes, because they already have Mainboard Thalia. Um, maybe land... I keep going back to lands. It really is an inspiration for the deck. Uh, lands does not have creatures. <laughs> At least not real creatures. It has Merit Lage. That said, they can still run Thorn in the sideboard because it hurts them less than it hurts the opponents uh, for whom they would bring this card in. So it's a four of. We desperately, desperately need it. And then lastly, for more graveyard hate, and remember, all our graveyard hate has to be asymmetrical, we have Tormod's Crypt, just something to do very quickly on turn one, and it gets an artifact in the yard for Tarmogoyf and for Delirium. So that's why it's not all surgical attractions or whatnot. Uh, and it deals with the yard, the whole yard, and nothing but the yard. All right, so that is Haship, Haship <laughs> Threshold, whatever, however it's pronounced. Let me, let me know. All right. <laughs> I hope you appreciate it. Again, some suggestions I can make are uh, obviously more diversity in the fetch lands. Maybe some werebears go out for matter reshaper. Traverse the Ulven Wall maybe goes for matter reshaper or another dismember. And I'm curious to see if I've missed any lands, uh, any other utility lands that I might be able to use. Uh, I don't want to get too cute, glacial chasm or maze of it or something like that. We're not that kind of deck, but. Sideboard, Bajukabog, Caracas, I feel like there's something else I'm missing. And yes, I have thought about, like, Quicksand and weird cards like that. No, no, I don't think that's good in the meta. Um, but if you have any other suggestions, feel more than free to let me know, and I'll happily give them a, give them a look and maybe try them out. Alright, take care, Magic Community. I will see you later. Bye-bye.